button. I am now recording. So that's the second thing that I wanted to tell you is this session is being recorded um, and we post it on the MPA hub uh, for the purpose of all students being able to watch that. Um, so without further ado, and because we're, we wanna be respectful of your time, uh, I would ask that, well, actually, before I get to Megan, I would ask that 530-736-1300, uh, if it's possible for you to change your default to your name, that would be extremely helpful for us as well. Um, and then uh, while you're doing that, I will turn this over to my advising partner, Dr. Megan Van Gelder, to start the meeting. Welcome, everyone. We are going to get started with an icebreaker on Zoom, which is always fun. And then we'll get, um, you'll get to meet your faculty and our fantastic MPA chair as well. And she'll go into more details about the program. So you have strong footing as you start your semester next week. So we're gonna do an icebreaker and um, we'd love for you to say your name. And if you wanna share where you work, and then um, answer this question, which I will answer so that your brain has time to get some traction. Here's the icebreaker question. What breakfast should be named the best breakfast in the world? And I'm gonna tell you mine. It would be a warm croissant coming out of the oven with chocolate chunks in it, with a bowl of berries, and some really good coffee with half and half. Okay, Connor, I'm gonna popcorn to you. Sure, uh, Connor Haggerty, I, uh, I'm a student here. Uh, I'm an employee at Washington State University in uh, Olympia, Washington. I work in our Office of uh, State Relations doing government affairs for the university, engaged in the state legislature, the governor's office, so. Um, excited to be here and looking forward to expanding the universe of knowledge that I uh, have. So, uh, and as far as breakfasts go, I like to always order the same uh, thing, uh, no matter the diner that I go to, um, because you can tell a lot by the way that someone prepares their bacon, their eggs, and either a side of toast, hash, or whatever they're basically their American quote unquote breakfast is. Um, I feel like you can gauge a lot, uh, depending on where you are in the country, especially on what that core, those three core items are. So that's my answer. And then you pick the next person, popcorn to someone else. Oh, great. Uh, I'll go to the person underneath me, which is Shane Pearson. I respect you sticking with the classics. That's always a, always a good choice. Uh, my name is Shane Pearson. Nice to virtually meet everyone. I'm the deputy director at a nonprofit in Lincoln, Nebraska called Family Service Lincoln. And yeah, excited to be joining the program and getting started next week. And I'll be specific. There's a, a little spot here in Lincoln called The Hub that has the best biscuits and gravy I've ever had in my life. So that's, that's my go-to. Uh, I'll kick it over to Courtney. Hi, I'm Courtney Carlin, and I'm in the uh, MPA as well as the MSW program. Uh, I work for STEPS over here at UNO, as well as I also work at Methodist in their physical therapy department as a receptionist. And I would say for me, I'm not a huge fan of breakfast food, so mine's probably a little non-traditional. Um, I like uh, a French hot chocolate because it's like this really thick hot chocolate that's like almost more like a like a mix of a pudding or something kind of like that and then just like dipping that with like a croissant or like some kind of like soft bread of a type. And then popcorn. Uh, let's see who's next to me. Uh, Tracy. Hello, I apologize for my lateness. Hi, Tracy. Hey, and the question, we're doing name, where you work, and best, what is the best breakfast in the world? What should it be? <laughs> uh, Tracy Fullerton, I work for the Barbara White's Community Engagement Center on the UNO campus. 
I've been here for about six years. Um, what is my favorite breakfast? One that is anything that is brought to me that I don't have to cook or clean up, to be quite honest. That's about all I ask for. <laughs> And then popcorn to someone else to answer. Just um, Shane, have you spoke up yet? He did. Michael, have you pulled up yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, my name is You're Michael Harris. Oh. Yeah, my name is Michael Harris. I'm a uh, reentry specialist caseworker. I work over at um, Douglas County Corrections in downtown Omaha. Um, and I would say best breakfast. It's really tough, kind of depends on the mood, but I would probably go with like chicken fried steak, hash browns, and maybe like a side of scrambled eggs. That's probably what I would go with. And let's see, uh, uh, Miss Hewins Maroney. I'm here. Um, Dr. Barbara Hewins Maroney, I teach in the School of Public <laughs> Administration. I'm happy to, to see all of you. Let's see, I'm not a breakfast eater either. And so if I am selecting a breakfast, I'm thinking of what I had this past week, probably a smoothie, a fruit smoothie with spinach and kale. That may be my best breakfast. So not, not probably exciting, but it's about all I have time for in the morning. So I think sit tap, is it sick tap? June? Yes. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sick Tech. Uh, I was a I was a master's student in biology last semester. I was doing teaching assistant, uh, but I decided like I want to do something more about public administration. So like I, I changed I switched from like uh, MS in biology to MPA. Uh, uh, my favorite breakfast, I think I I like omelet, maybe egg. I like omelet with ham, cheese, or green peppers. Um, Alisa. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I work for, um, I have a background in social work. I work for a local nonprofit, Project Harmony. Um, ideal breakfast, I'm pretty boring. I usually have oatmeal every day, but my ideal breakfast would be, um, I'm friends with the owner of Architect Coffee in Omaha. So anything of his espresso drinks, and he has a kitchen there, and they make um, authentic Korean food. So they have breakfast sandwiches, breakfast pizzas, anything of that nature. It's everything's delicious from her. So that is my ideal breakfast. Um, who has not gone? Hi, um, I just walked in. I am sorry, I was in a work meeting. I just got off. Well, welcome. You may go ahead and go, um, Sophia. It's, um, we're just introducing ourselves, where we work, and then answering this question. What, uh, is, what breakfast should be the best breakfast in the world? Ooh, oh my gosh. Uh, so a food lover, I don't know. Um, well, I'm Safiya Mahaman. Um, I work at the Simple Foundation. We're a nonprofit here in Omaha and we work with refugee people. Not really the resettlement piece, but the, after, they, after they get settled and everything, we help with their academics, ESL, all that good stuff. We have a soccer team, we have an entrepreneurship program, a girls pro program, and um, what best food? I don't know. I kind of like African food. They're pretty heavy breakfast, but I like it. I mean, I'm not really like a breakfast person, probably brunch. So very unhealthy, like anything fried, like yeah, fried yam, fried potatoes. I will do for breakfast. Sounds good. And we have a few who haven't gone yet. Shailen, Dr. Ebden, Dr. Harold. You can pick one of them. Dr. Harold. Thank you. Um, 
So I'm Jim Harold. Um, I think I've talked to all of you. Uh, I'm the MPA advisor. I'm also uh, instructor. So what I do in this program is I uh, teach two classes a semester and also do the advisement for all the MPA students. Um, so this semester I'll be teaching PA 8050, by the way, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, along with uh, Dr. Hughes Maroney, who teaches the other section. Um, <clears throat> so breakfast, uh, yeah, I, so I actually, it depends. It, so I like biscuits and gravy, you know, my military background, we called it something else, not repeatable. Um, so if the biscuits, the biscuits have to be real flaky and freshly prepared. So the problem with biscuits and gravy, um, and I'm not a biscuit snob, but if, but if like, if you have really hard, dry biscuits, it's just biscuits and gravy just really suffers. Um, I will make a recommendation um, for those of you who live around the Exarban area at the farmer's market, there's a vendor there that does biscuits and gravy. And I'm trying to think of the name of their, their, their business, but they have a booth and it's super good. Um, and they do all kinds of different varieties of gravy. Um, and so I'd highly recommend that one if you're doing the farmer's market there in Exarvin Village on Sundays. Um, that's, you can get some really good biscuits and gravy. So I'll popcorn this over to Shailen. Hi, I'm Shailen Alex. Uh, I work at Youth Futures in Ogden, Utah. So I'm the finance and grants administrator for them. They're a shelter home for kids ages 12 to 18. Um, and my favorite breakfast food is really easy. I just love fruit, a good fruit bowl, and I'm satisfied. And then I think that's everybody, you know? It's Dr. Ebden. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Dr. Ebden. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, everybody. I'm Carol Ebden. Uh, I am the director of the MPA program. This year, I'm kind of on in uh, transition. Our our full-time, I'll say, uh, chair of the program is Dr. Tara Bryan, who is actually on sabbatical this year. And she's in the Czech Republic with her family doing teaching and research and having a great time. So she's gonna have some wonderful stories next year, I'm sure to tell all of you when she gets a chance to meet you. Uh, so anyway, in the meantime, I am here. I teach uh, the budget finance classes. So Shailen, I'm excited. We have a finance person. Uh, and so you might see me in one of those classes. I teach contracting. I teach capstone. Um, those, those are sort of the typical classes that I teach. And breakfast-wise, I'd have to say Eggs Benedict would be my go-to. I almost never eat it, but, <laughs> but that's, that's what I would say is the best. Good question, Megan. I was worried it was going to be something really hard. So uh, I'm just, I just want to start before we get to the um, faculty teaching this semester. I just wanted to say we appreciate you showing up. I know you didn't have a lot of notice for this. We have been during COVID, we've been experimenting with different kinds of orientation. We used to make everybody, including online students as far away as Washington, come to UNO for orientation. And uh, that got increasingly hard, even before COVID, that got kind of difficult for the online students. And then during the pandemic, it's been kind of tough. So we've been doing a variety of different things. I think most recently, we've just posted some videos on the uh, MPA Canvas Hub that you all have access to as students. And Jim and Megan and I were chatting last week, and we decided that we really would like to get people together to the extent possible. So we weren't sure who would be able to actually make it today. So we do appreciate you taking the time. We know how busy you are. We don't wanna keep you too long, but we, we think there's a lot of value in at least having some face-to-face -face kind of um, discussion. You get a chance to meet each other and how valuable is it to know what each other's favorite food is? I think that's really important. So uh, also before I turn it over, to Dr. Hewins Maroney. I want to mention that Dr. Gary Marshall is also going to join us. I've been, you know, I looked like I wasn't paying attention because I was on my other computer emailing with him, sending him the link. Uh, he will be joining us at some point. Uh, he's going to be teaching um, two sections of the organization theory and behavior class. So he's going to join as well to talk to you. But I think what we're going to do, I have some 
kind of boring, just overview slides, just key things that, I, that we think everybody should know. But before we do that, we're going to have you have a chance to uh, find out a little bit more about the classes that you're going to be taking this semester. I think probably all of you are going to be taking PA 8050, which is the Foundations of Public Service class. Dr. Harold and Dr. Hewins Maroney will be teaching that. Uh, they have two different sections. So we're going to let them go first. I think, Barbara, do you want to do you want to start and kind of chat a little bit about the class, your expectations, et cetera? And then if you if, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask. All right. Thank you. Well, if you're in my section, you notice that I posted the syllabus already. And don't feel that, you know, it's almost 20 pages, but don't feel it's so daunting. What I do normally is not only do I um, lay out the requirements for the class, but I also attach the assignments because when we were teaching Zoom, well, it, when the pandemic started teaching Zoom and I was teaching um, a couple of classes, we had so many technical difficulties. So I just felt I'll put everything in one location and so that students can go and access it easily. But also, if you look at Canvas, and Canvas is a system that we use at the university, the Canvas system is open and I populated it already. Um, so there's the assignment section and each of the assignments is posted already. I primarily have about three major assignments in the class um, because I like students to do sort of a variety of things. One assignment I call is current and future challenges. And in the current and future challenges, I have students um, interview five public administrators to ask them some questions about the challenges they're currently experiencing and what they're looking for in the future. And the goal of this assignment is to sort of get an idea of, especially if you've not been involved in public administration already, get an idea of what kind of challenges individuals in our enterprise and in our discipline are facing. And students um, actually sort of like, um, like this assignment. It, it, if you're not employed in the public sector, and I've already had questions from some of the students in my section that says, how do I find these individuals? Um, but, and I've given some students some hints because if I know, know what they're doing currently, I can suggest some places where they can go and contact individuals. So that's one assignment. And in all my assignments, I should say, I'm always interested in the students looking at the concepts and notions of public administration. And then what can you learn? And most of the assignments, there's a, a section that says, what are your reflections on this as a public administrator, as a public servant? What should you learn? Another major assignment is called Public Administration in Action. And that's just um, looking at, and primarily video, and if you can in person, go to a public meeting and observe. And I give students a series of questions of items and things that they should observe from not only pretending if they were in charge of this meeting um, or if they were stakeholders. And once again, if you were in charge of, let's say the city council meeting, if you were you know, the chief clerk, what would you do? How would you do anything differently? And then also looking at you know, concepts like, especially for city, city council meetings, was there any decisions made, this, this decision-making? And the last major assignment is something called case studies. And in, this is the, the assignment in which I ask students, what are you really interested in in public administration? And let's look at one issue or one concern that you've encountered and that you've been interested in that you can write a small case study about. And this is primarily 15 pages. Most of the other ones are, are, are much shorter. It's very interesting. I've even had um, one semester, I had a student do soil studies because I didn't know about Nebraska and the soil issues or the legalities of fighting regionally for water rights or immigration. So, you know, students in class will talk about this a little more. And, and what another overarching or smaller assignment is something I call sharing the wealth. 
And in this way, I want students to sort of explore the literature of public administration. And so students will select two articles um, dealing with two topical areas and they will read it, write like a, a short brief, like one, pa one page to a page and a half brief and then students in the class will reflect on it or ask questions. But it's a way of you looking at the literature in public administration. I think it's that's very important, especially when you're beginning. So that's pretty much the class in general. And I, I also should say, along with your case study, you're gonna do a short video on VidGrid. And since I've not taught strictly online, I'm more in-person and Zoom faculty individual. Teaching online, this online um, environment is going to be very interesting for me. And so I'll have a few hiccups, like I had a hiccup today in trying to post something to the class. But just bear with me, and so and I will bear with you. So I'm looking forward to the semester. And if you have any questions, always you know contact me. I'm usually on the computer. Does anybody have any questions at this point for Dr. Hewins or Ernie? Yeah, go ahead, Michael. Uh, yeah, I just had one quick question. Uh, I guess I'm not entirely sure. Do you have any recommendations on where we should be looking for those journals? Are there specific journals or publications or where should we be looking for those types of articles? In the syllabus, I've given you some, some suggestions of journal articles, and in also the Chris Library is very, very helpful. And there's something in the, in the library when you go into the databases, public administration abstracts gives you a whole host of public administration related um, journals that you can um, look at. And if you need more, we can help you. I can help you with that. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Barbara. Uh, and as, as she said, Dr. Humans Maroney almost always teaches this class for us on campus. And we normally have, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this from Dr. Harold and Dr. Van Gelder already. We normally have a lot of on-campus classes as well as online classes. And you can choose which one you wanna take unless you're in Washington or someplace where you're gonna take everything online. Uh, the pandemic has had an effect on this. Most, most students are not yet ready to come back to campus. So uh, we are hoping that in the fall, we'll be back in a normal routine with, um, with quite a few sections of classes on campus. So bear with us this semester. Okay, Dr. Harold. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna do a screen share here real quick. Um, share the right screen. Uh, maybe, let's see, hold on, bear with me. No. Well, I was gonna show you my, um, okay. I was gonna show you the Canvas site, but I won't. I'll just talk through it. Okay, so for those of you in my section, um, <clears throat> I noticed actually that all but maybe one student has already looked at the Canvas site, which has been posted, so great. Um, if you haven't done that yet, please do so. So here's what you're gonna see posted on there. Um, let me go through that first. There's a intro module that has all the resources you need really to start the class. So that includes the syllabus, the grading rubric I use for written assignments and discussions. And then there's a whole entire section on research because this is the intro class and one of the goals is to get you into doing research and writing um, as was discussed. So there's an entire section where I have some helpful, I think they're helpful, videos on the research process. Interestingly enough, one of the, one of the videos uh, does go into that library uh, resources guide. If you are not, if you do not have an account at the Chris Library, go to the Chris Library and establish your account. That's going to do you a world of good, not just for my course, but for every single course that you take in the program, because you're going to have to do research, whether you're remote or in Omaha. Tons of research in the library. You don't have to walk into the library to do it. 
So all that, all those sources are available to you, including really more and more um, textbooks and other books that are going to the electronic version. So it's getting, it's actually getting more and more convenient to do research from a remote location. So make sure that you have that library account. Um, so in my class, here's my approach. I focus on what I call two main areas. One is really more public administration as a function, you know, i.e. what do public administrators and nonprofit administrators do? So that's the doing part, right? And so we have a couple of textbooks um, and one book really focuses on that. The other, the other issue, is what are what I call the big ideas or the sort of the philosophical underpinnings of public administration. You know, there are some really major ideas that you need to familiarize yourself with um, that again are gonna speak to all the rest of the coursework that you have in the program. Um, you know, things like why do we have something called public administration? Um, you know, what was the progressive era and why why is that influential in public administration? You know, what is the administrative presidency and why is that important? So all these kinds of things are really important as big ideas in public administration. And so the way I handle that is your major term paper for the semester is going to be writing on one of those so-called big ideas. Um, so that's the major assignment for the term. And so a lot of those instructional videos that I talk about research, those really point to, to that, you know, how to research and, and some tips on, on how to write. Um, and that paper, this is not uh, the typical, like it's due on Wednesday of finals week. So on Sunday, I'm gonna start the paper. It's actually, it actually has some component parts along the way, such as a proposal and such as an annotated bibliography which I'm going to have you turn in about halfway through the semester so that you can assure yourself that you're, you know, that you're researching, that you're finding the sources and understanding what those sources are, are trying to say. So that's that part. The other part is, you know, along the way, what we will do is um, similar to what Dr. Humans Moroni talked about. We will have, have some summary and reflective writings that respond to what we've been talking about in the course. So this is an online course, but there's about two or three times during the semester where I'm gonna ask you to join me on Zoom. I make that very convenient for everybody. Um, so during the weeks that I do that, there will be more than one Zoom meeting. Um, you know, I don't expect that everybody lives in the same time zone or has the same schedule. And I'm, I'm, very, um, I'm very flexible with that. And I've had nothing but positive feedback in all my online classes from students when I do that because um, it kind of relieves you of the some of the fatigue that goes with uh, being in an online class. Because um, there is a, you know, there's a fatigue with, with going to class every week, Wednesday night at 5.30, but there's also some fatigue in online classes. So, you know, both of those uh, modalities have advantages and disadvantages. And so I'm trying to relieve a little bit of the disadvantage of online by offering that. And again, most students really, really enjoy that. That's a chance for us to get on Zoom and just kind of openly discuss some of the concepts. So that'll happen a few times during the semester. And then the other thing that'll happen is during, during the semester, there will be opportunities for you to write summaries of what we've been talking about in that particular um, unit. And that's the way I break up the course in that particular unit of the course. So that's kind of the summary. Get on the Canvas site, please, and you know, look at all those sources. And and um, you know, we jump right in on when the semester starts on Monday. Any questions for me? I had one for those of us that might be new to using Canva. Do you have like a go-to resource to help kind of get an overview and and learn how to navigate uh, that platform? Yeah. So. Uh, Canvas is, actually Canvas is, is really pretty self-explanatory. If you've used any kind of learning management system, Blackboard or Canvas, um, uh, what you're going to see 
even when you go on Canvas, um, and if you're in my section, it's gonna, you're, you have access. Um, the left side of the page has all the, the different modules. And then the way I do the course is right in the middle are all the modules. And so for my course, I number it by weeks. So there's um, 16 weeks in the semester, actually 15 instructional weeks in the semester. And I go week one, week two, week three, week four. And every week, um, everything you need is in there. And everything that's in that weekly module is exactly like the syllabus, uh, including other links that I might put in, like websites or something that I want you to look at, or videos or something that I want you to look at. Um, and also in that every week module is my recorded lecture that I put in. So my lectures, I give you a recorded version on VidGrid, and I also give you a, the PowerPoint version so that if, you know, VidGrid fails or something, you can, you can look at the PowerPoint version. Um, so all that stuff is in there. And then the other, the last thing about Canvas that's super important and super helpful is on the right-hand side of your page, of every student page, is what's due and what's coming up. So when the assignments are loaded and I put in a due date, on the right hand side, it's gonna, it's gonna say coming up. And there's all the assignments that are coming up are gonna be there on Canvas as your calendar. So that's kind of it, you know, that's really the best way to get into Canvas is just explore it and start seeing what's in there. But you start with going to my UNO and you go to my UNO yeah, and load you. my UNO and then go to Canvas. And if you do have problems, we have a very we have a very good what we call the UNO help desk, and they will help you. And I've even uh, gone what I call after hours. And so if there's not someone at the University of Nebraska at our, the Omaha campus, sometimes they've switched me to the Lincoln campus, but I've also talked to people in Salt Lake City, which is the home of campus, to help you if you are having some difficulties. And once again, because of the pandemic, we've had some outages and some times when students were trying to submit papers and, and when we, we couldn't do it, but uh, there's lots of help. And so if you just go to UNO help if you're ha having difficulties. But Canvas is pretty much set up with, and, and for my class, most things are in what I call files and the files are per week and the weeks are identified for the, for the semester. Yeah, thank you for that. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. my, my UNO, I skipped a couple steps there, yeah. but mm -hmm. right, super. And actually, by the way, my, the My UNO tab is where you're going to go for other resources you need in the, you know, you know like going to Degree Works, uh, going to MavLink, going to the Mav Track, my advising schedule. So that's, that's, that is a good place to start. I thought, Michael, did you have a question too? It looked like you might have had a question. Uh, no, mine got answered. Thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Harold? or about Canvas? Has everybody had a chance to get on and at least sort of do an initial look at Canvas? Okay, again, it looks, I think it looks a little daunting. We used to use Blackboard, we switched to Canvas, I don't know, two, three years ago. Um, I think we all generally like Canvas and you will find that every instructor does things a little bit differently. And so some may use more videos, some may use more uh, Word, PowerPoint slides, um, linking you to other sites. So there's, there's, there will be quite a bit, bit of variety in how instructors set up their classes uh, for the online classes as well as on campus. Um, and the, we use Canvas for the most part for grading and things like that. So even if you're taking class on campus, your instructor might expect you to be submitting your assignments through Canvas rather than bringing a hard copy to class. Again, that, that will vary, but uh, we, we are becoming more and more reliant on Canvas, even if we're teaching on campus. So you really wanna keep up on Canvas and um, particularly looking at your grades regularly. Don't wait until the week before the semester ends to realize that on Canvas you have an F and you didn't realize it. Uh, maybe the instructor made a mistake when they posted that 
I do make mistakes. Now I know Dr. Hughes Maroney and Dr. Harold never make mistakes, but I make mistakes. So, you know, I always tell students, you got to keep an eye on me on your grades because I have been known to make mistakes. So you do want to keep it on, keep, uh, keep up on that. Okay. Barbara, if you want to hang out, you can with us. If you want to take off, you're welcome to as well. It's up to you. But I am going to move on. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Hey, I'm nice gonna... seeing all of you. Oh, I'm certain I'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. So I'm going to move on and just talk a little bit about, um, maybe, there we go. Uh, some key things that we think it's important for you all to, uh, to know about. Again, I already introduced myself. This is my third time leading the MPA program. I've been here for a long time, 20 some years. Uh, and uh, I love UNO. I'm from Ohio originally, and I lived in upstate New York for a long time before I came here for this job and very happy in Omaha, uh, except for the winter weather sometimes. But other than that, it's a great place to live. I already told you what I teach. Um, I do, my research is generally around uh, state and local government, primarily local government budgeting and financial management. So those are some of the things I do. Um, Jim, we have people in the waiting room, it looks like. Uh, okay, so a little bit about, um, oh, maybe that's old then, sorry. Uh, a little bit about what we do. This is a lot of words on this screen. But in essence, the idea is to tell you that we have a lot going on in the public administration. We have a number of undergraduate programs. Dr. Van Gelder has been highly involved in uh, doing some new undergrad uh, things. We've got some exciting things going on on collaborative leadership that uh, we got a big grant for along with, I think, two or three other programs. Megan might talk about that if she has time. Uh, so she's been working on that a lot. Uh, you will, you know, obviously the MPA, we also have two graduate certificates, one in public management, one in nonprofit management. Students in those certificate programs will be taking classes with you. So, so you might meet some people that are not actually working on their MPA. Instead, they're working on their uh, graduate certificate. We also have the dual degree uh, with social work, we're working on a couple of other dual degrees at the moment. We have urban studies, and then we have a PhD program as well. Then we have a whole bunch of professional programs that are non-degree programs. You will not likely see those people in those non-degree programs. They're not taking MPA classes, uh, but they'll be on campus quite a bit. You might see them. So this is just to say that we have there are a lot of things going on in addition to the MPA and the dual degree program that you're involved in. So we're 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 pretty busy. Um, doing a lot of things that we think are important. Hopefully throughout your time here, you're gonna see the mission statement repeated quite a bit. I'm not expecting you to memorize it, but we think it's important for you to know what we think we're trying to instill in you. Uh, so we have a school of public administration mission, which is to strengthen public service in a democratic and first society. And then our MPA mission expands that uh, by talking about that we're educating students to manage and lead public and nonprofit institutions effectively, ethically, and democratically. So those are, those are things that we live by and that we want to make sure they come across in every course that you take. We also have identified some core values, things that we, that across everything that we do as a school are the things that we, uh, we, we kind of live by, the values that, that we are centered around. Uh, and those are that we're student-centered, collaborative, inclusive, innovative, ethical, and that we have a commitment to excellence. So that's who we are overall as a, as a school. Also, I'm sure you all know that we're highly ranked. We're, the new rankings are being done now, so we don't know where we'll stand, but we're uh, highly ranked nationally. Um, uh, we, have a, our, we, were one, we were one of the first programs to be accredited by NASPA. Uh, which is our national international accrediting body and we're very involved with them in a number of ways uh, so we're very active nationally as well uh, competencies i want you to know coming in that we measure performance on these five competencies these have been identified by our accrediting body naspa 
So they expect everyone, every MPA program to be working to instill these competencies in their students. Um, and I'm not gonna, you can read these, I don't need to read them to you, but every program defines these things differently. So our pro, for our program, we have defined, we've come up with some definitions for each of these five competency areas. And then we have different ways that we measure that. One of those ways is that we ask you to take a, what we call a pretest. So in the next week or two in your PA 8050 class, you're gonna be asked to respond. Megan is gonna send you an email with a link to a survey. That's only going to take a couple minutes to take. It's just um, basically we're, it's a list of things that we're asking you how confident or comfortable do you feel in these areas. So we ask you that at the beginning of the program. And then at the end of the program, when you take your capstone course, which is your final course, we're going to ask you to do that same list, that same survey again. And then we will compare your pre and your post. And that helps us get a feel for how do you feel that you changed over time in the program? And so that's one way that we, uh, we measure, assess how we're doing in um, you coming out of the program with these competencies. So these are important to us and you'll see these in, in some of the syllabi, you'll explicitly see uh, some of those uh, things. Uh, I think you all know most of this. So I'm just gonna kind of briefly go through this. Our program is 30, and of course, this isn't a dual degree. I know we have a dual degree student in here. This is just, just the MPA. 39 credit hours uh, overall. At the end, you will take your capstone course. You have to have completed 30 of your 39 credit hours before you take the capstone course. And the idea of that, that course is it's an applied research project that kind of helps you bring together a lot of what you learn in the program. And so it's different from every other course in that you have to submit a proposal so that when you actually begin the semester, when you're doing your capstone, you, you can hit the ground running and you're not spending four weeks trying to figure out what your topic's gonna be. You don't need to worry about that yet, but just to know that that'll be coming at the end. Expectations, these are things that you should expect of us and that we expect of you. Uh, and of course, there's, there are a lot of things, but these are the things that we think are really, really critical and important. So one is commitment. We, everybody on our faculty is passionate and deeply committed about teaching and teaching MPA students. So we are very highly committed to this endeavor. We hope that you are committed to also doing well in the program. Professionalism. I sure hope you don't have any issues with any of us not being professional, and we hope that you'll you'll behave in a professional manner as well. Curiosity, uh, again, I mean that's a part of being a student, right? Is being curious. You wouldn't be here if you weren't curious. Uh, and so we are too. Where most of us are doing research on interesting and new things all the time. Uh, we're we're dealing with practitioners uh, to learn what's going on in their world, even though we're not we're not practicing. Uh, we're gonna wanna hear a lot about your experiences. So the curiosity thing is, is a, what, what we think kind of a critical factor. Inclusivity, this is, you know, this word gets tossed around a lot, uh, but we, we take this very seriously. We wanna be inclusive in a very broad um, use of the word. Uh, and we hope that you have that, a similar attitude about that. We all learn from each other. And the more inclusive we are, the more we're gonna learn. Uh, and then the last one is striving for excellence. And we are trying to be the best that we can be and model that for you. And we hope that you will do the same. All right, some, some connection things. Um, there is an MPA hub, which is on Canvas. So when you go into your Canvas site, you should automatically be set up so that you can go into the MPA hub. And Jim, is there anything you want to say about the hub? So, yeah, two things. The, the hub is our information site. We often post announcements on there for, for the general MPA and, and associated um, programs group of students. Um, if you go on Canvas and it's not showing up, send me an email, please, and let me know, and I will make sure that uh, you are included on the hub. And so things are on there like, for example, this will be posted, the recording of this will be posted. So 
It's just a site we try to keep updated with general information. And then we also have social media to we have, you know, all the all the usual suspects that you can get hooked into uh, that will also be helpful. Um, uh, Dr. Harold does the advising. Do you want to say anything about that? Uh, I like to try to meet with every student once per semester. That's that's the big the big takeaway on advising, and that helps you with the upcoming semester and after. That's my role there. And then in terms of uh, internships and career, uh, Nikki Allen uh, how, uh, is the uh, head of our internship program. She also does uh, internships for uh, emergency management and disaster services for their undergrads. So she does a lot of internships, uh, helping people internships and then working through the process, uh, helping you with the expectations. If you don't, have, all of you have experience, it sounds like, uh, but if you're, if for students who don't and they're coming in and they, you know, they're coming in right from undergrad and they haven't had much work experience, we often suggest, we don't often, we do suggest an internship uh, and you can get, you can do that as a three credit hour class. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, we can help you with that, um, help you get set up, find an internship that's appropriate for you. So again, I would suggest if that is interesting to you or if you are in one field now, but you really want to go into another field and so you'd like the opportunity to learn more about that area, that an internship might be a good way to do that. And then Sierra Mosley is on our staff and Sierra uh, handles career services things. So you'll be getting regular emails from her that have job opportunities. So if you're looking for a new job, this is, this is good because every week there will be a listing of new opportunities out there that might be of interest to you. And they're from all over the country and the world sometimes, uh, not just Omaha. So, and also if you know of job opportunities, let Sierra know, she can post it in that. I think those are the key things um, for connecting. And then, also, again, professionalism is important to us. And, and one thing that's helpful as you go through your career is to build networks, uh, professional networks. And so we encourage you to start doing that while you're in the MPA program. And there are different ways that you can do that. These are just a few. These are not all inclusive, obviously. Uh, the American Society for Public Administration is a national organization uh, for, it, it's a generalist organization for anyone interested in public administration, whether you're in nonprofits or emergency management or finance, uh, whatever. Uh, and, and so uh, this is a good organization to belong to. They have a student rate. We have a Nebraska chapter that does some activities so you can get involved in that. If you're interested in, um, I didn't, didn't sound like any of you are uh, interested. Well, maybe Michael, uh, corrections. Uh, if you're interested in local government management, we have a good relationship with the Nebraska City Management Managers Association. A lot of the city managers and city administrators in the state of Nebraska are grads of our program. So we have a lot of connections there. And then we have a student chapter for the International City County Management Association as well. Um, uh, Nonprofit Association of the Midlands is the local uh, organization that kind of helps all the nonprofits, uh, not just in the Omaha area, but in this, in this, uh, in the state. Um, we have, you know, we're, we're quite involved with them as well. There's a young nonprofit professionals network in Omaha. Again, if you're not in Omaha, not all of these are going to be useful, but there might be similar things in your area that you can get involved in. And we also have a, uh, the Government Finance Officers Association is a national, international organization and we have a Great Plains chapter here as well. Megan, you've been involved in some of these things. Anything you want to say about professional networks? Uh, no, just, I guess I would say that student chapter, that is our chapter. Co co a current student, Cody Brem, um, helps lead that. If you're interested, reach out to me and we can connect you. Um, and also that NCMA, they are very generous. We have a great scholarship from them as well. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, a few, you already heard about a couple of these things, but uh, we just wanted to, again, reiterate that 
don't feel alone. I think especially when you're taking online classes, sometimes you're sitting there at home alone and you might just feel a bit overwhelmed and you don't quite know how to do something. Please reach out. First, reach out to your instructor. All of us are happy to help in any way that we can. And so please, 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 I can't say that enough. I would rather have you let me know that you're having some issues because first of all, you're probably not alone. Um, and so it's helpful for me as an instructor to know that somebody's having an issue because then I can do something to help other people too. So you're not just helping yourself, you're helping other, you're helping your peers. Uh, so it's really helpful to know. And, and we know that things come up. Um, you know, I'm not just about these things on this slide, but particularly during the pandemic, we know that everybody's struggling. People are having friends, family members, you're getting sick, um, you're struggling with kids being at home um, that normally wouldn't be, or taking care of your parents, or whatever it is that is more challenging than normal. People are having mental health issues. We understand that. Um, and we want to help as much as we can. So it, the more that the quick, the earlier that you can reach out to us and tell us that you're having trouble, the more we can do to help. And we will bend over backwards to help if we can. The longer you wait, the harder that is. You know, if you wait till the day before a test is due and say, I just don't, I just don't get any of this, it's gonna be a lot harder for us to help. And we do want to help. So I want to start with that. And then these are some specific things. Um, that are that should be helpful for, to everyone. Dr. Harold mentioned the library. Uh, they, there are a lot of services available at the library. And again, especially if you haven't been in school in a while and you're coming back and you have to do a search for a paper for Dr. Harold's class on, I don't know, the Federalist Papers, and you don't even know how to begin to do that. So the library has staff that can help you. They have guides for each topic area, you know, for public administration, they have some guides for resources or how to, how to look at things, how to look up things, uh, how to use the databases. So they're there to help as well. So don't feel like you have to do this on your own. There are people that are uh, very willing to help. The Writing Center, uh, again, the, these, the 8050 especially is a class that we want you to be doing some writing uh, to get in practice to do that. It might be a little different from the writing you've been doing recently. Uh, you know, if you're in a job where you're doing emails and that's about it, or you might write a memo once in a while, this is gonna be a little bit different. And so writing might be a little bit of a struggle. We have a writing center at UNO. It's, it's a great resource. Uh, it's very helpful. Now, again, yeah, you can't wait till the last minute to do this. You can't wait till the day something's due and then ask them to look at it. But if you think you have issues with writing, or you know you do from past experience, then you might wanna work a little bit ahead so that you can get the Writing Center to help you with writing. And then Dr. Ewens Maroney mentioned the Help Desk. 554 Help is the number for the Help Desk. They are wonderful. All of us have had issues with IT at one point or another. Uh, you can call them, you can email. Um, uh, and they're pretty good about responding pretty quickly. Uh, so can't say enough about that. Um, any other, am I missing any resources? Are there other things we should be talking about? Oh, if you do have COVID, I should have put this on here. It might be in people's syllabi. If you do have COVID, uh, we, the university asks that you complete a form. It's called a BRT form. There will be a link to it. If you go on the website for COVID resources, there's a link to that. That's our way of kind of keeping track of where people are. And then if you have, if you have issues like you get long COVID or something and you have trouble, you're struggling with classes because you're still so fatigued uh, or have breathing issues or whatever, uh, then our disabilities office or accessibility office, excuse me, um, will help you and then they'll send a note to your instructor that you've, you know, give you, you know, cut you some slack <laughs> for a while because you've got health issues, that kind of thing. Uh, so they will work with you on that. So that's important to note. Um, I think that's it. Okay. And then just some tips. I think you've already heard these again. The MPA Hub, again, is, is a really good resource. There is a handbook that's on the hub that has all the details 
about the program. So if you ever have a question about how many classes do I have to take? What, what's the expectation for grades? All that is in the handbook. Or again, feel free to ask any of us. And I can't say enough that we're here uh, for you. Again, student-centered is one of our five core values. So we are definitely here. I don't, there's nobody on our faculty that isn't willing to help in any way that we can. So, um, but again, that, that means you need to let us know that you've got an issue and uh, you need help. Or if you're having any issues in um, classes or you, you don't understand something, please reach out to the faculty member and uh, they will be happy to help you in any way. You will probably be dealing mostly with Dr. Harold uh, because you'll, he's the one you're gonna talk to every semester about your courses. So in terms of advising, uh, he's the one you'll probably have the most contact with other than the instructors that you take uh, from semester to semester. And um, generally he'll give you good advice. <laughs> Now, if it's about sports teams or something, that might be different, but uh, generally about the program, it'll be okay. So any questions on any of that? You know, I kind of went through that fast. Okay, well, Dr. Marshall is here with us. Gary, do you wanna, you missed out on the question about your favorite breakfast. So feel free to share <laughs> what your favorite, Megan's question about your favorite brex, breakfast. If yeah, you want. I'll say this, Gary, it's officially yeah. what breakfast should be the best breakfast in the world. Okay, well, I'll give you one just specially for today. In Omaha, we have a, a a special store, it's called Carter and Rye, and the people that run it, they make uh, individual hand pies, you know, and um, this morning I had breakfast with two hand pies from them. I shared, my wife and I cut them in half, so we only had, each one had, had a hand pie, but one was uh, ham, cheese, and egg, really delicious, and then uh, the other one was uh, roasted beets in balsamic vinegar and uh, some other things that made it kind of sweet. So it was really sweet and savory breakfast. So if you're in Omaha, try Carter and Rye hand pies at 50th and center, or I'm sorry, 36th and center. So yeah, definitely a great choice. And it made my day really great. I'm going to uh, share with you, I'm uh, the faculty member that's teaching the Organization Theory and Behavior class, PA 8090. So for those of you that are taking that this semester, welcome, I look forward to working with you. And I just have some quick slides about me. So let's see if I can get this in the right spot. Okay. Of course I can't, hang on just for a second. I think I was working on too many things today. Here we go. <laughs> Let's see. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna find it in another part of the slide here. Okay, and let me see here. I can get the screen to minimize and start it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do it with this because I've already given you too much. Uh, so uh, can you see me? Yeah, so we no, we can see your slideshow. Okay. All right, great. I'm just gonna use the slides here. So a little bit about me, I have a PhD in public administration and also have a master's degree in counseling. I'm a licensed mental health professional. Um, I have administrative experience, which I think is really important for somebody teaching organization theory and behavior. I chaired our PhD program, uh, was uh, head of a, one of the professional associations in public administration. Um, I worked uh, for the federal government and ran the selection process for something called the Presidential Management Fellows Program. Um, and uh, after 
my undergraduate degree, I was an infantry officer in the army. So fair amount of professional experience there. These are my research interests, the impact of culture and society on public administration theory, uh, workplace identity, how people sort of assimilate their uh, sense of self in the workplace and how uh, issues uh, in organizations affect one's own understanding of both work and identity. I've also written about uh, culture in higher education and have an interest in psychoanalytic theory as well. So uh, in our course, PA 8090, which is one of the introductory courses in the MPA program, we focus on some general themes related to the study of organizations. So that's culture, society, and how those sort of, sort of core foundations of um, society uh, affect the way we understand organizations. So that includes, so what that does in terms of this class, it talks about the history of organizations and sort of how major societal shifts affect the structure and practice uh, of work. Um, conceptual knowledge, which I think is really important, which is, you know, different ideas about um, how organizations work, things, uh, stuff about human behavior, the nexus between those theories and everyday practice, how context and situations in the workplace can uh, inform the practice of uh, public administration and therefore one's work uh, place practices and organizations. How the public sector is different and also the nonprofit sector is different than the private sector. So we'll talk about those three sectors in different ways and go back and forth on that. So we also look at theories of organization, but then specific, what we would call organizational behavior, looking at leadership, motivation, those kinds of uh, ideas. And then how we use academic literature to inform the way that we study uh, organizations. So uh, the themes that we'll cover in our class in the, the, throughout the semester, the history of organizations, the relationship between the external environment and the workplace, how uh, the structure of organizations, workplace structure, formal and informal dynamics, um, uh, how we understand those, the role of technology, organization change and culture, and then some things where that relate to your own experience, knowing you're in, if you're interested in your own personal development, how do you do that within the workplace? Then uh, theories of motivation, how at the team and supervisory level, how others manage and also leadership, uh, forms of decision-making and the impact of uh, diversity on organizational life. Um, these are the kinds of assignments we have. There'll be obviously the weekly discussion through Canvas and then some assignments. Uh, I ask you the first uh, assignment will be to look at an organization you're familiar with and then talk about its structure and the effect of the structure on the dynamics within the organization. Uh, another assignment is a short essay that allows you to reflect on your workplace and how you fit in. There's a major paper on leadership and then there's a midterm and a final. Obviously the thing that will be most intense is the, um, the uh, weekly discussions. And um, okay, so the, the last slide here is just talking about uh, my emphasis. So you'll have different faculty throughout the course of your MPA program. And these are the things that I will be looking for when I read your work. An emphasis on theoretical knowledge, the ability to explain and apply concepts, how those concepts are put together and how you understand those concepts. That'll be a really important thing to explain ideas in your own words. How to use academic literature. Dr. Ebden mentioned the connection with the library and in your major paper, uh, throughout the for the semester, you'll be uh, using academic literature. Um, again, why public settings are unique, whether it's uh, a public organization or a nonprofit organization, or you know, as we outsource more and more the connection between all three sectors. Uh, I'm interested in your organizational experiences, and I want you to talk about those. So this idea of andragogical knowledge, the connection between 
the theories and ideas that we talk about and your own personal experiences in the workplace. Also want you to be aware of the things that matter to you as you chart your course um, in everyday life and in the workplace. And then appreciating paradox and difference. And what I mean here is that there are lots of things that um, happen in the workplace that are unexplained by theories there or something paradoxical happens. And so we wanna sort of examine the ideas that we're looking at uh, during the semester with a critical eye. And then finally, sense making and retrospective analysis. And that is that we always think causally like this causes this causes this, but sometimes things only make sense after the fact. And so we wanna emphasize that there are different ways of understanding you know, the dynamics in the workplace and making sense of your own experiences. And that's it. I just really look forward to working with you. Um, the um, Blackboard, excuse me, the Canvas site is up and uh, the for starting on the 24th, I'm asking you to read the uh, introductory chapters of the two assigned books. So you should be able to find the syllabus. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or call me and that um, accessible, like Dr. Ebden mentioned, that's one of our strengths uh, that we're very accessible. Thank you very much. Okay, let me stop sharing here. Okay. Any questions for Dr. Marshall? Okay, I have, thanks Gary. I have uh, one last thing that I think hasn't come up yet, which is that you're gonna learn a lot from us, I hope, uh, and that's important, but you're also gonna learn a lot from each other. And hopefully, you know, we talked about professional networks. A lot of you are gonna become part of each other's networks going forward. We have a lot of alums who have, who have made very good friendships in this program and that have stayed in close contact and help each other get jobs and keep jobs and uh, hire people, other people for jobs. So, we, so part of the reason we like getting you together for orientation is so that you start getting to know each other and you can start building those relationships. So you can help each other throughout the program and after the program is over. So that's, that's one thing I think hadn't come up yet that I just wanted to, to mention. Not to say you're gonna learn more from each other than from us, hopefully that won't be the case, but you will learn a lot from each other. And that's all I have. Megan, did you have anything else before Dr. Harold wraps it up? No. You did great, Mo. Okay, Jim, it's all yours. Okay, well, we're excited that all of you joined us today. So thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time and your attendance and the semester starts on the 24th, Monday, and we will see you in class, at least virtually. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks, thanks everybody, everybody for joining us. Great to meet you all. Likewise. For hosting this. Meeting you guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Okay. I'll stop okay. recording now. So thanks.